Today's video is about top places to visit in vibrant and colorful Busan city. Without further ado, let's start! We were lucky enough, the station was just near our uh, Airbnb. As, and we were not sure if this is the right train, but we asked locals, locals asked the other locals, and we were in the train and it looks that we are on going to the right direction. So it's like seven or something stops and we will uh, jump out of the train. So it took us around half an hour and we are here. So now it's around the 20 minute walk to the temple. You can take the bus but it doesn't help that much and the weather is not too bad. So we decided to have a short uh, walk. Uh, what is nice, you can come here with the same uh, T-Money card that you use uh, for the transportation within the city so you do not need to buy anything new it costs around 1,500 uh, uh, won and uh, here you are after like 40 minutes or something you are in the right spot it looks like a lot of city here you have a lot of mall then lot of premium outlet and more Lata Mall so it's like a lot of companies owning this part of the city uh, where you're going to the temple I mean it's not bad you can find Lata almost everywhere uh, you in go city in center, yeah, and almost in every city center uh, but here it looks just wild because there's attraction park there also owned by Lata so it's like a small Lata village here if there is one thing you need to know about Mantas that if there is a city that is completely flat and there is only one hill in the whole city we will climb it for some reason we will definitely go the hill and just all the people in here look at that We are entering and look at all of these soldiers. Only now realized that these are all the animals from the Chinese calendar. What a cute seat! You just sit in someone's hand. <laughs> so this is the most popular site in the whole Busan. It's not really in Busan, it's like 15 kilometers away from it. But still, it's very close, and as you can see, it's packed. There will be many steps down. You have to go by the pace of all the people, because there are so many of them, you couldn't just go around. So this Haedong Yonggung temple uh, is one of the rare temples in Korea that, that stands on the seaside and it's one of the large ones as well and because of this location near the one of the most popular beaches there are a lot of sightseers and of course the most sightseers are here during the Buddha uh, birthday when there is lanterns everywhere and you could have seen in this it's similar like in Thailand it's very hard to find a shot without people around you but uh, but it's a very pretty and nice place if you are able to walk a lot of stairs there's that mask. As you can see, they are claiming that it's the most beautiful temple in Korea. What I personally like the most about all of these temples and buildings are the details in it. 
all the paintings, all the little dragons, clouds, everything. And the inside is even better. I have never seen the Buddhist statues like that, but it looks so cool. Way more charismatic and those, those colors, they just pop everywhere. And here is one of the laying Buddhas. You can find a similar, just like 10 times bigger in Thailand in one of the main temples. But at that time, we weren't filming yet. So you can only see in, the, uh, in our Instagram. What is interesting here, all of the ceilings are with these numbers, you see? There are numbers, lanterns here. And it looks so cute, but we have no clue what it is. So if you have an idea, please write down in the comments. And uh, we would like to know because we can see the words and numbers, but we have no idea what it means. And that's my favorite Buddha. Favorite of all is the Laughing Buddha. I just love them everywhere we found them. He is so happy about his life. So for everyone still looking for a Dragon Ball Z ball, one is here. So we just took a metro and then a bus for 20 stops and we finally reached Taeyongde Park. So the goal today is to walk around and find the famous sculpture here. And as you can guess, this place is full of hills because Manta's planted. Yeah, hills are right. Again, cabbages everywhere. They could come to our country because we are best growing only potatoes and cabbages. <laughs> so they will just enjoy it. Exactly. Cabbages are everywhere here. And we are not sure if these are actually cabbages, but they look like these. What is really nice in Busan that there are a lot of parks and uh, uh, sightseeing locations with uh, nature and trees. And when we were in Seoul, it was mainly temples and the uh, city. So it's very nice to have these long, even <laughs> if hard, walks around the nature. Yeah, but I think also the nightlife is also very good in the sun, so there is a really kind of good mix. So the hills here are not too steep, so anyone with any physicality could walk it up to the top of this park. Already reached the top, you can see the east sea behind me. Also, if you would look more strongly, let's say, so you could see the shores of Japan there as well. Yeah, but at least I, I cannot see that. So yeah, down here I'm going to see the lighthouse. I need to take like uh, 200 meters by steps. Down the road you can see the, some nice observation dock. And we can see the glimpse of the lighthouse, which we will see very soon. I think maybe it's even a better spot to observe it. There is a harder way and an easier one. We chose the easier one, of course. statue behind me is the well-known statue of this park. This statue is called Light Beyond Limitation. The overlapping of the red and blue circles where blue is the sky and the sea and red symbolizes the sun, the universe and this bar in the middle symbolizes the light from the lighthouse showing everlasting movement toward the universe by splitting the sky and the sea. You can see all the beautiful cliffs that were naturally formated, the waves hitting the rocks, and 
tons of chips all around here. And here you can buy some snacks and just have a view. Let's check how it looks. So this is it. It took us around one and a half hour to go the whole circle and it was nice, a very good weather. Of course if it's raining I wouldn't suggest to go here because there are not a lot of places to hide from the rain uh, but if it's sunny it's really worth it. In Busan, there is one amazing place which in our opinion is the number one place to visit in the whole South Korea. It's a Gimshan culture village. We have a whole episode about this colorful and rich of history district. You can check it by clicking on the link at the top corner of the screen. So here we have a uh five markets in one place just one to each uh, other and uh, you can just get lost in here of course it's uh, Thursday so it's quite empty and it sometimes looks that some of the shops just opened um, but it's better for us because we can check everything out and there are not too many people yeah and basically this is also a night market as well but it opens only at 7 so right now it's only day markets opened so. Yeah, and as you know, we are on vacation, so we couldn't be somewhere at 7 because we're working. So our option is only the day market. one of the five Gukia market it's uh, it has ceilings so even if it's raining or it's colder you can come in here so this is the market we are coming for and it's way bigger and actually looks fancier than the Gukia market and here you can see there are quite some people on the motorcycles and just walking. What do you think, Mantas? Yeah, it's, it's, it's much, much, much better. Uh, and every, everything is so interesting here. I mean, I have never saw uh, some of the products which you can buy here. So I guess yeah, you can find anything here. Especially in the market, probably you haven't seen those things. Yes. So you can see we have clothes here. We have medicine or some kind of a small department store we have glasses and purses it's a traffic jam a bit <laughs> of course as in a normal market we have some food that you can buy and more food some meat of course some fishes most of them we have no clue what it is and now we are entering the uh, food part with uh, all the smells you can <laughs> <have. laughs> with all the smells, fish smell, food smell, everything, spices. You see all the spices. We have no clue what it is. Going to the hot countries and to the countries uh, where you have all the fish markets. There, the smell here is way. Uh, lighter. Lighter, yeah. You can't really feel the fish, you know, it's not that strong. So the market is quite big. Of course, part of it is just food, another part is mainly uh, clothes and everything you could need in your daily life, even cigarettes. In the market, what's very really strange, but uh, as a tourist, you probably just come here for the sweets, maybe for some souvenirs, but there are not a lot of souvenirs here. So it's more like a 
real life market that you could actually use when you are living here. So we are currently in Busan International Film Festival Square, otherwise called BIF Square. And uh, this square was uh, started with uh, the, one of the first Busan Film Festivals. Uh, and uh, in the beginning it was only like two cinemas here. And after that they created more and more. And now it's kind of a small hall with a Busan. An international film festival uh, continues to happen here constantly. Uh, but in the street you can find all the things that you could usually find in Hollywood or all the other places. Like uh, hands, you know, of the actors. Uh, squares, so like 400 meters. Yeah, something like that. Like 400 meters, not a long one. Uh, but if you happen to be here during the film festival, there is the whole action is happening here with actors, with red carpets, with everything. So if you want to come uh, and if you are a huge uh, movie fan, so that's the place. We are going to the book uh, street and it's not very hard to recognize uh, where we could find it because there is a huge statue of books in the middle of the street. What is special about the book street? So it was just a simple street um, before the war, after the war, one like one after another, the small bookstores opened here. And after some time, it became the whole street only of bookstores. And the youth actually and tourists love to come here because it's not only, of course, bookstores, it's not only new, but also the old books, used books. And as well, you can find a lot of small cafes here. Uh, you know, and they are like, have all the vibe of uh, the book kingdom. Uh, so it's nice to walk around and these bookstores are uh, always uh, good to look at because of all, you know, the uh, similar colors or the mix of colors of the books. So you can see all the small bookstores of the old books, kids books, and of course all of the titles that we couldn't read. I mean, we could read this one in his life, John Lennon. You can see they're small and cozy. You can just go through them. Oh, I love this one. I think these are the books for kids. Couldn't read, but the drawings are very nice. Of course, you can find all the manga in here. I think they are are as popular here as they are in Japan. And every year when there is a culture festival in Busan, what happens though in this street, there are a lot of workshops and some of the workshops are to create the uh, book covers. So maybe you can talk to the authors and to the writers. Uh, so it's a very nice place to be if you are a huge uh, book lover as I am. I really love books, I love the bookstores, I love the feel of them. And here you can find the feeling of all these old bookstores that I love the most. You can even find some English books in here. Of course, not the biggest part, but there are still a Harry Potter, for example. You can take the photos in here, but the photos are so cool. Just look at this. This is it for today's video. We hope you liked and enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support means a world to us. Let's meet in other videos.